In this video, I introduce the enthalpy contributions for an ideal gas. So here's the standard free energy uh, standard enthalpy change, and that has for an ideal gas four contributions: uh, the molecular part, translation, rotation, and vibration. And let's go through them one by one. So for the molecular part that has to do with the interaction energies of the electrons and the nuclei. And so there's no simple equation uh, for this particular term. The translation, that's the one that has the standard symbol. So that is given by, for an ideal gas, 3 halves times n times r times t, and n is the number of moles. And then we have uh, the pressure volume term, and we, if the pressure is one bar, then we put this superscript uh, circle here to indicate that it's standard. For an ideal gas, PV is equal to nRT. So 3 halves nRT plus RT is 5 halves nRT. So that is the equation for the translational uh, enthalpy. Then for rotation, we have 3 halves nRT that's for most molecules, that's for non-linear molecules. If the molecule is linear, then the rotational enthalpy is only nRT. Finally, we have vibration. That's a bit more complicated. As you can see, that's given by this expression. Um, the vibrational frequencies, uh, in this case, are actually wave numbers. So that's uh, numbers given in units of inverse centimeters, or wave numbers. Uh, so that's sitting here and here. Then you have contributions from, well, let me take the rest here then. So you have h is the Planck constant and c is the speed of light. If you use this unit for wave numbers, then the speed of light has to be given in centimeters per second. Uh, when I say frequency here, what I actually mean is wave numbers, but it's common to refer to these as frequencies. Uh, if you multiply these three things, you get uh, a very useful constant, which is the number of joules per inverse centimeter. Each vibration uh, contributes to the enthalpy, and for a molecule you have, for a nonlinear molecule, you have 3n minus 6 vibrations. So NAT here is the number of atoms in the molecule. If you have a linear molecule, then you have 3N minus 5 terms here in this sum. Okay, so here comes a question for you. Here you have the water molecule, 25 degrees Celsius. And what I would like to know is what is the rotational enthalpy for this molecule? So what is the value? and how many different vibrations contribute to the vibrational enthalpy. And you can see the, the choices here. So press pause, think about it, and when you're ready to answer, press play. Okay, ready? Okay, so the first thing is the rotational enthalpy. So that is 3 halves times r times t. So let's compute that. So 3 halves times r, which is 8.314, times t. And so of course here you have to always use Kelvin. So 25 degrees Celsius is 298 degrees Kelvin. And you can see the answer is 3.7 kilojoules per mole. So this number here is in joules because that is the uh, that, are, that is the unit of the gas constant here. Okay, then how many vibrations contribute to the enthalpy? The rotational uh, sorry the vibrational enthalpy. So that is 3 times the number of atoms in water, that's 3, and water is a nonlinear molecule. So we have to subtract 6, and that gives us 3 vibrations. 
Let's verify this using molecular calculator. So let's, let's build water. Here's the water molecule. Calculate. And let's look at the vibrational frequencies. And as you can see, yes, there are three vibrational frequencies. There's this one, this one, and this one. And let's look at the thermodynamics. So we ask what is the rotational enthalpy, and that is 3.72 kilojoules per mole. So this is calculated using exactly the same equation um, as I showed you before. Okay, so the answer is B, 3.7 kilojoules per mole for the rotational uh, enthalpy, and three vibrations contribute to the vibrational enthalpy.